Incognito from Posted on the Corner, tapping in Hot 107.9 and Remy Martin. We're about to do something special today, live from Main Street Studios. We're going to mix it up, ATL, talk about this mixtape culture. We're going to tap in with some of the greatest influencers from the city. Grab your bottle, let's do it. What's poppin', man? You know what it is. Trendsetter DJ Sense, and you're mixing it up, ATL, with Remy Martin. Let's talk about the beginning, the name, DJ Trendsetter Sense. How you come up with this name? Because I had the, uh, you know, growing up in Philly, that's where I'm originally from, being a kid, just loving the culture of hip hop, um, and just the influence of the neighborhood. Um, my first love was actually like graffiti. Like I had these older cousins that was like real into the culture. They knew how to break dance. They knew how to. Graffiti. They knew how to rhyme. They knew how. To, they knew how to do everything. And they were teenagers. I'm like a seven year old kid, and they taught me how to graffiti. And then that's just kind of the at the time that was just the influence in the city of Philadelphia for me growing up at the time. And I learned how to write my letters, but the le best letters that I could write was S E and N. So I just practiced it a whole bunch of times, and then I was like, "Sin." That's kind of whack. So I would, then I added sensei, and I was like, that's too long. And I was like, ooh, sense. So then I started going around Philly, tagging all over the place like a stupid teenager, writing on walls, getting in trouble, being a juvenile. And then at the same time, like, when I was, like, 16, I fell in love. I had some friends that was um, that was a DJ when I was in, when I was in high school, about 10th grade, and he was a DJ rocking parties and stuff. And I always, I would listen to the radio, in, you know, in Philly. And then I was like, damn, I could do that. And I just listened to the to the mix show DJs. Funny, um, I used to listen to um, Kobe Cole and DJ Rand and Cosmic Kev, Power 99 back then. Um, that's who I was listening to. And um, I just was, you know, listening to that style. And I would emulate it and start practicing it. Um, my mom got me my little quick, my, my next door neighbor was a DJ. So my mom bought his stuff. For my next door neighbor, cause he was, you know, he went, he got older and grew up and grew out of DJing, and then I got the equipment, and then I just started practicing. Um, so that's how, and then when I start, I started getting gigs. Like I just was hustling fast. Like I was just like, yo, I want to do your party. I want to do your party. I want to do your party. I didn't even have a name, but my best friend used to always come with me all the time. And he and then I was did some gig, and then some dude that was hosting it was like, all right, up next we got, well, what's your name, boy? And he was like, his name is DJ Sense. And it just stuck with me because that was my graffiti name. So that's how the sense transferred over. I didn't come up with Trendsetter until I moved down to Atlanta. And that's when me and Drum was just doing our thing. And it was like, yo, we need like aliases. So he at then he was like DJ Drama, the Jedi Captain or something. I was like, oh, I need to be. We thought we were superheroes or something. I was like, oh, because I thought I was fly and all that. So I was like, oh, I'm going to be a Trendsetter. That's how it stuck with me. It, I was... It wasn't trendsetter since it, I was DJ since the trendsetter. But when we found our drops, when we discovered our drops, when we did all the mixtapes, I found that drop, that trendsetter, and everybody started calling me trendsetter. So then I was like, "Yo, I gotta change my name up because I'd be like DJ since." He'd be like, "Okay." I'm like, "I'm trendsetter since." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You on the mixtape? I said, "Okay, I'ma switch that up." So then I just switch. You know, I. I switched it up and made my name Trendsetter Sense. It's Trendsetter DJ Sense. Legally, it's Trendsetter DJ Sense. So for the people that know me as DJ Sense, I still keep that in there. And the people that know me as Trendsetter, I kept that in there. So I, you know, I trademark Trendsetter DJ Sense. That's how that whole thing came together. Let's talk about the beginning of uh, Gangsta Grills Radio, or Gangsta Grills, the the brand. Okay. Um, we were doing mixtapes. Um. I was interning at the station. Um, me and Drama both went to went to uh, DJ Drama. We both went to um, Clark, but I was interning at the radio station, and um, he was like, he was selling. He had mixtapes that he was doing, but this was before Gangsta Girls. He had uh, he had a mixtape called uh, Still Hungry, Automatic Relaxation, a couple other brand, couple other names. I can't remember all the names. And um, I was Emperor Cersei's intern when he was on the station at the time. And um, just learning from him, learning how to learn in the game and everything. And Lil John would come up because they had the B and me click together. So I met Lil John. He would come up, and this is when he was who you with, you know, get crunk, Lil John. So he was starting to bubble in the city. 
And um, I'm just the intern answering the phone and everything. And um, Cersei, like, started to take a liking to what, what I was doing. And then I, I he saw I had, like, a crew. I had Drum and Don Cannon, and we was some young cats, and we was just moving. We was in school. And um, he was like, yo, well, the, the birthday bash before that birthday bash, I remember... I was interning and I was working at you know the the um Lake Lakewood Amphitheater and I saw DJ Jelly and Monte was killing them at the at the birthday bash in the booth and I was like damn they doing their thing like you know what I mean so I went back and I, I told Drama I said yo these you you know I know cats are trying to do the mixtape thing they killing the birthday bash I mean they had to move racks out <laughs> out the booth so I say, yo, next year, like, let's prepare ourselves to do that. So then a year year later it comes, and um, I was, you know, that time came again, and Cersei saw our grind, and he was like, yo, I, I see what y'all doing. He used to call me and drawing the Young Guns. That was our first little name, the Young Guns. And he was like, yo, man, I'm a, I, 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 here, man, just take this bread, man. Y'all go do it. I want y'all to set up a booth, man. Just go to set up a booth. Cersei put up the money for that. He, he was like, I want y'all to set up this booth. So um, I came to drawing. I was like, yo. I got this bread, and Cersei gave me this money. You know what I mean? We still in school. Like, we young cats. We barely trying to make a living. And um, I said, yo, let's go print up all these tapes. And then Drum was like, man, we got to make a tape. Let's make a tape for, like, that fit the city, that fit the South, because that's how the, the culture was transcending. You know what I mean? And, he, and you know, because we, we from Philly, so we always, you know, we was trying to mesh and, you know, transition. So, and then we didn't want to be, like, too East Coast and, you know, just, like, kind of get involved being a melting pot with the whole situation so um we was trying to make we had an r&b tape you know like like my series this is before my series rhythm and streets i think i started it like a year or two later i can't remember but so we had a little different series and then like john was like um yo we need to do something that's you know catered towards atlanta catered towards, cater towards the south and i was and we just sat there and we just he was just like he was trying to come up with the name, and we was, he was like, mm, Grills. Uh, he was like, Gangsta Grills. I said, that's it right there, Gangsta Grills. And then the first tape is actually not even Gangsta with an A. It's Gangster with an E-R, and it don't got none of our names on it, and it's just a grill with gold teeth. And the playlist was weird. Like, I remember the, we had the song Eric Sermon, Just Like Music, on there because that was the hottest song out at the time, just so we could do numbers, but everything else was like, you know, hot songs from the South. And then the funny thing was that tape went crazy. You know what I mean? And then, you know, made the money back. I made Cersei his money back. I felt good. I'm like, yo, look, you know what I mean? And then, um, you know, I guess that that, that, that created an inspiration. And then Cats just kind of wanted to continue. And, it, and, and, and we just kind of kept going and going and going. And then being up at the station, I told Drum, come up to the station and meet Lil John, you know, cause he was bubbling. Just come out, you know, get familiarized with people, what's going on and everything. And then I brought him up there, he met John. And then um, he asked John to come through. He wanted to get a host for a mixtape. Cause he, you know what I mean? He saw it with like Clue and K Slay and all them kind of DJs was doing. So he wanted to get a host for the mixtape. So he asked Lil John to do it and he did it. And he pulled up, we had this little, this little bummed out shack duplex that me and drum lived in and it's funny man because that's a famous spot because we ended up having so many artists come through there from ti to jeezy to monica to bone crusher to i mean i could keep going two chains Ludacris. they all came there and we was just some little college cats and they pulling up in they benzes and they getting money and everything and they still was pulling up i thought that was real and that's how you know you really start getting the confidence like damn we really got something going so Lil John pulled up and he hosted the joint. And I think that tape came out hosted by Lil John, Gangsta Girls. I can't remember which one it was. And then I remember he was like, um, I don't think he could get a host or something for the next couple joints or something. He was like, damn, I gotta figure it out. So really, when Lil John is just hosting the tape, like, hey, that's your boy Lil John, and this is Gangsta Grizzles. He did all of that. So Drum just edited the shit and just put that all over the tape. And that's how that drop was formed. Where's the Gangsta Grizzle? That's the drop. Because it really he was like, hey, it's your boy. This, this is Gangsta Grizzle. He was like, fuck it. I'm just putting this all over the tape. That was like a, he's like, just to fill it in. And that's how that drop got born. And that's really what birthed the um, the Gangsta Girls. The, the, the first Gangsta Girls that I really felt like 
was really like, oh shit, this some shit. It was when we did Gangsta Girl 6. There was a couple others, but I remember Gangsta Girl 6 because I got real cool with Killer Mike. I ended up being his DJ at that time. And then we developed a relationship with David Banner. And this is when David, this is like a pimp first came out. David Banner was like the hottest thing. And Killer Mike, was, Tom Action, was they were the hottest coming out of Atlanta right now. We already had, um, we already developed a relationship with um, T.I., but I... I, I, I'm getting my years confused, but I just remember it was around the same time that the 50 Cent album came out. That first album that was like 20 million. And Atlanta was a big ass bootlegging ass city. A lot of flea markets and all of that. So I remember we went to one of the flea markets just to, I didn't even know all this was there. But we had these exclusives because I remember we had little, um, David Banner do a freestyle over in the club. Um... The 50 Cent in the club. And I remember he killed it right then and there. And then we put Killer Mike on there. We just had all these exclusives. Man, we went to the flea market. Man, it was 100 million 50 Cent albums and 100 million Gangsta Grills. Mm. And I was like, oh, shit, this is some big shit. And we ain't seen not one of that dollar. But being a DJ, it was all about rep. You know what I mean? So he was like, all right, well, you know, this will pay off in the long run. So that was the, like the evolution of the, the whole Gangsta Girl situation. There's plenty of other stories, but. Yeah. Uh, how did it feel, you know what I'm saying, being out for the what damn, you just decided that story, but I was like, if you're outside and you hear a car ride by and you hear Gangsta Grizzlies, Trendsetter, mm. what's that feeling like? That felt good, man. Um, <laughs> That's kind of how like my name got a little little known like you know what i mean like and it was on key songs it was i remember my drop was on this the future song um and if you made it on the top you the chosen one trendsetter man everybody knew that motherfucking shit i was like damn anywhere i went that shit motherfuckers playing in the club motherfuckers call me yo this mother and i'm like they be thinking yo that dj playing your drop nah he just playing the song with my drop like it's cool like that's where he got the song from you know what I mean? But no, it's a good feeling, man. It make you feel like your work is paying off. How did the mixtape culture uh, amplify artists or break artists? It was the key component, man. It was the key component. We we really was the, you know, not even us. Salute to all the DJs that was doing it while we was doing it. You know what I mean? But, like, it, it was the go-to. Labels was calling us, you know, management, everybody. Everybody was just calling, like, this is we gotta do this, you know what I mean? Like this, it was the the, it was streaming before streaming. Now it's the streaming and the playlists and all that, the, the, you know, because technology has changed. But before all of that, it was going through the DJs the organic way, you know, through building they through the platforms and the mixtapes. Atlanta mixtape culture is special. You mm. guys have a thumbprint on that. Watching the Atlanta mixtape culture impact the world and the industry. What, what would the industry be without it, or how did Atlanta impact the industry? It's funny you ask that question, man, because, and we mentioned Lil John. I tour managed Lil John for two years. So Lil John had me, Lil John had me in Japan, Russia, Dubai, Africa. I've been all over the world, right? Twice. And it's funny, man, everywhere I go in any country that I was in, Atlanta was the music. Anywhere, I'm in Moscow. Moscow and we playing Migos and 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 this was before this was right before Lil Baby. Lil Baby was just getting hot. So I can't say Lil Baby, probably now, you know, we'll see because of the COVID thing and all of that. But I'm hearing I'm hearing the Migos, I'm hearing Yo Gotti, I'm hearing Two Chains, I'm hearing, you know what I mean? I'm hearing everything that was waving around the world. And then you like and then it make it, it, it made you be appreciative because I kind of felt like I was in the best of both worlds. I was traveling internationally with this iconic artist and we doing a lot of international things musically, but then at the same time, the hub and the home base is Atlanta and you going everywhere and you you being in Atlanta, like the, like we in this studio right now, we in Mean Street Studio and a lot of these records was created even in here. You know what I mean? Where you going a whole nother spot around the world and those records you're hearing and people are like vibing to it and they really understand the culture. You know, even people that fly, you know, I meet 
across the world that want to fly into town. They want to go take pictures in front of Magic City like it's a like it's a tourist attraction. Like they want to take a picture in front of the logo. So that's crazy, man. So that's that's a that's that's a I like that. That's appreciative to be in that hub. Gangsta Grills and that tag, mm -hmm. watching it evolve to a industry standard on air, on mixtapes. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about how Gangsta Grill is the start of that. Man, it was it was something special when it came to them drops, man. Just the way we found them. I can't tell the secrets where we got them from, but I wish I could. But I just felt like it was very important for us to had those drops and I, I felt like we when we started hitting those drops on the mixtapes and then we brought it to the radio when we brought it to the radio and, and put it out there on the forefront i felt like it became like the textbook way of how you should do a mix show or how you should do a radio show like putting your drops and making it like in it just a whole adventure of a uh, uh, music that you're trying to go on this journey on man i felt like we you know we really trendsetters no pun intended we're doing that you know what i mean <laughs> yo what up man trendsetter dj sense man you mixing it up atl we out here the affiliates all that good stuff man shout out my man incognito you know what it is remy martin hot 107.9 yep